So, Sucrose, the package you mentioned that you received before, it's not dangerous, is it? You need to be careful when you're opening packages. I once had a friend mail me some research materials, and all the bouncing around in transit caused a reaction. Once I opened it, oh, it let out a stench that could wake the dead. If your package contains anything like that, then maybe you should check with Albedo first and see what he thinks. No. This package didn't contain any hazardous materials. Timaeus! Sucrose! What are you two chatting about? Oh, hey, you two. Uh, we're just talking about a strange package that Sucrose received recently. A strange package? Yes. I believe it's from a Sumero scholar who came here to study in Mondstadt. It's most likely a thank you gift for collaborating on some research together. Huh? A package from an Academia Scholar? Oh, then there could be anything inside! There wasn't anything dangerous inside, just a bunch of strange cards. I think I've seen Timaeus with some similar looking cards before, so I came to ask him about what they might be. Uh, you've, you've seen me with some cards? <laughs> Maybe those were the testing cards used for distinguishing reagents. No, they didn't look like test cards. Here. Have a look. Oh, you meant these? Huh. Sucrose, have you really never seen these before? No, never. Recently, I've been spending all my time up in the mountains working on cultivating pentatonic sweet flowers. Why? Is this an area of research that has started trending in the alchemical community during my absence? <laughs> you could definitely say that it's trending, but not as an area of research. It's a card game that's been getting really popular these days. It's called Genius Invocation TCG. Genius Invocation TCG! Genius Invocation TCG! Haven't you heard of it before? Apparently, it's a game that was invented by a scholar in the academia. People from all over are playing it now. That's right. The game's been catching on lately. The Yae Publishing House in Inazuma has even published a series of light novels based on the game. The story is really good. It starts with a young guy in Sumeru who finds an ancient casket of tomes in the attic. He opens it and discovers that the soul of an ancient TCG player called the Crocodile King has been captured inside. It turns out that the Crocodile King was King Deshret's Viceroy, who battled an opponent named the Ibis King. During the match, the Crocodile King fell prey to his opponent's scheme and was sealed away in the Casket of Tomes. After being unexpectedly released by the kid, the Crocodile King possesses him and helps him to gradually climb the ranks and become a legendary TCG player. Uh, Timaeus. Huh? What's wrong, Sucrose? Uh, if you're interested in how the story plays out, I can lend you the novels. No. I was just thinking about that time you requested an extension on your progress report deadline, citing personal reasons for the delay. <clears throat> well, uh, I did go through a phase recently where I wasn't putting enough focus on my work, but it's under control now. I've committed to not even touch Genius Invocation TCG until I've made enough progress in my research. <sighs> well, that's unfortunate. Oh? Why is that? Well, since it's a gift from a researcher I've collaborated with, I thought that I should at least try to learn the rules. That way, I could say that I at least tried to appreciate his gift. Oh, right! And since it's a game from Sumeru, who knows? Playing it might even make you smarter! Oh, just wait until Paimon plays it enough to become smarter than you! Then you'll be sorry! Although, it seems like we can't learn how to play it anytime soon, because Timaeus has given up for a while. <laughs> well, research is my priority, you know. But, if you'd like to learn the rules of Genius Invocation TCG, then I'd actually suggest you go to the Cat's Tale. 
Yep, that's the place. It's where everyone in the community goes to play when they have time. They gather there, trade cards, and they're very welcoming to new players. Trying to learn the rules can be intimidating at first, but it's a lot of fun once you get the hang of it. Understood. Traveler? Paimon? Let's go to the Cat's Tail and try asking around. To be honest, hearing Timaeus talking about the game has also piqued my curiosity. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get going! Welcome to the Cat's Tale. Ah, <laughs> it's the Traveler and Paimon. What a nice surprise. Oh, and Sucrose the Alchemist. It's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> I'm afraid I've already told you before. Fur from the Cat's Tail staff is not for sale, no matter how much Mora you offer. <laughs> Don't worry, Margaret. We're not here for that research project I told you about last time. Uh, Sucrose, what kind of experiment were you trying to do with the cat's tail? Uh, oh, I just wanted to test out some hypotheses, and I needed some materials. But, uh, we can talk about that later. Actually, Margaret, we're here to learn more about Genius Invocation TCG. Ah, Genius Invocation TCG. We were just talking about that game. You see, more and more people have been gathering at the Cat's Tail to play, so I thought, why not have a dedicated staff to serve the new customers? Speaking of which, I believe you've already met. Hmm? Met who? You know, Prince. This is the Cat's Tail after all, so I thought having a cat take care of our new customers would be quite a nice touch. Ah, allow me to interpret. <clears throat> Prince says that the word customer is much too loose of a term, and we should instead refer to anyone who loves dueling with cards as TCG players. Hmm, <laughs> my mistake. So it seems I haven't introduced you yet. This is Prince and Shuyin. They will be in charge of taking care of our TCG players. Ah, I'm afraid I must correct you there, ma'am. Only Prince, the strongest and most formidable TCG player of all, is capable of providing valuable guidance to our new players. The average player is incapable of grasping the subtlety and sheer genius behind Prince's every play, and he has no choice but to rely on me to communicate with everyone. I am merely Prince's lowly assistant, that's all. Wow! Another guy who can understand animals! How can you use such a crude word as animal to describe the one and only Prince? He is special and the only one of his kind. Such a remark is an insult to Prince. Meow. Oh, what's that? Shu Yen, in the eyes of the common folk, I look no different than any other ordinary cat. It's a natural mistake to make and you shouldn't overreact. Ah, understood. I do apologize. Hmm. It seems he really is capable of communicating with the cat. Could this be the result of some modification to the language center of his brain? Seriously, how can he get all of that from a simple meow? It was the duels of genius invocation TCG that allowed our hearts to bond. It's understandable that ordinary people such as yourselves are unable to comprehend such a thing. So, playing Genius Invocation TCG fosters some sort of a telepathic link between players? Hmm, somehow Paimon doubts that. Uh-huh.
Anyway, if you'd like to know anything about Genius Invocation TCG, then please ask Shuyan. Uh, who will ask Prince? Though I'd love to explain more myself, it's time for my daily walk. I'll let Prince play a game with you and walk you through all the rules. Just as a seasoned warrior can foresee the path of his opponent's sword, so too can I, as a TCG master, predict my opponent's every play. It would be improper to pit a newcomer to the art of the card against one such as myself, and I must therefore politely decline. <clears throat> That's what Prince said. Oh, Prince doesn't want to play with us, huh? Fine, then Prince doesn't have to. We'll play you instead! I'm sorry, but from the day I met the mighty Cardmaster Prince, I swore an oath that my hands would live solely to hold the cards and not to play them. I will never play another match of my own again. If Prince is unwilling to play, then I guess we should look for an alternative. Hmm... <gasps> How about this? Diona! Blah, 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 what is it? I'm pretty busy over here, you know? Huh. Why is it that every player that sets foot in here to play Genius Invocation TCG has to have a drink? Ugh. Don't they have any clue that the key to playing a game is the ability to think straight? Seriously, games and drinks don't mix. Don't they get that? Ugh. What can I say? As the tavern owner, I can't help but feel happy to hear this. Anyway, I see you've been working hard, so I thought you could use a break. So why not come over here and teach these customers the rules of genius invocation? Ha! <laughs> yeah, what kind of break is that? I'd rather not. <laughs> oh, why are we letting all these loafers come in here to play genius invocation TCG anyway? All it does is encourage more people to come to the bar for a drink! <sighs> you know, if drink sales keep going up like this, pretty soon Mondstadt's alcohol industry is going to reach new heights! <sighs> <sighs> Looks like my first step in destroying Mondstadt's alcohol industry should be stamping out the spread of Genius Invocation TCG! My dear, you are quite mistaken. You said it yourself, a clear mind is necessary to win. Soon, their thirst for victory will overcome their thirst for alcohol. Prince speaks the truth, Diona. Not only is the spread of genius invocation TCG no obstacle to your goal of destroying Mondstadt's alcohol industry, it could even support you in this endeavor. C could it really? Sure, why not? Alrighty then, our two customers are waiting to learn. Shuyan, let's put you on drink mixing duty for now. Well. But Shuyan is destined for a far greater purpose. Shuyan, drink mixing, now. Oh, uh, okay. Ooh, alright! We'll need some space to learn! <laughs> let's go to that empty table over there. Let's go through the rules. First things first. You'll be needing your deck, so place that on the table. Uh, deck? Uh, yes. You should have built a deck. You know, a set of cards that meets the bare minimum requirement to play the game. Uh, what's with the blank stairs? Come on. Don't tell me you came to learn Genius Invocation TCG without bringing any cards. Yeah, we need a practice deck. Can't you just let us use one? Psh, there's no such thing. Okay, let me think. Huh. <sighs> to learn the game, you'll need at least two character cards to switch between. Oh, oh, that reminds me. A few days ago when I was closing up for the night, I noticed a customer had left a couple of character cards on the bar counter. <laughs> Maybe you could use those for now. Are you sure that's okay? Eh, it's already been a few days and he still hasn't come back to claim them. Who knows? Maybe he left them here on purpose. Oh, 
Oh, okay, yeah, I got them here with me. Y you know, just in case the customer came looking for them. Yeah, <laughs> not because I like to play the game or anything. <laughs> Please. All right, so now we have two character cards. That's everything we need, right? Yep. So, are you ready to start? All right, then let's begin. <laughs> Welcome! Welcome to the world of Genius Invocation TCG! Simply put, this is a game where you control character cards to duke it out with your opponent! Pew pew pew! Once you've defeated all of your opponent's character cards, victory shall be yours! Now then, you're gonna need a character on the field to start with. Let's finish this, swiftly. First, we roll eight elemental dice at the start of every round. These dice correspond to elemental energy. We'll be spending these dice to perform actions. Once the roll phase is over, you'll enter the action phase, where the real game starts! During the action phase, you can spend elemental dice to perform various actions. Of course, the most common action is to use character skills. Not bad! You just made your first attack! During the action phase, both sides will take turns making their moves. After you use a skill to attack your opponent, it's their turn to attack. And as you can see, once the enemy finishes their move, it's our turn again. Now, these are Omni Element Dice. They can be spent on any move regardless of the elemental type. So, we're gonna use them to pay for the Pyro Dice needed for this skill. Go on, give it a try! <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good! That's one opponent down for the count. Bam! But the game has only just begun. Remember? You have to defeat all opponents to win. Hmm. As much as we'd like to attack again, seems like we've run out of usable dice. Huh. In that case, let's end this round. After you end round, you won't be able to do anything else this round. And once everyone chooses end round, we can move on to the next round. All right, here we are, a fresh new round. Hoo -hoo. <laughs> And a fresh new round means time to roll the dice again. That's how we're gonna get the elemental energy we need, after all. Ooh, that's some terrible luck. Well, there's no way we'll be able to use Diluc's skill now. But don't worry, situations like these are why we have the option to re-roll! <laughs> Once per round, you can select all the dice that you don't like and re-roll them! When the action
selection phase begins, the player who first chose N round in the previous round takes their turn first. This means that since you finished first the last round, you'll be the first to start this round. Alrighty then, let's learn a little bit about energy and elemental bursts. Each time you use a skill, your character will gain one energy. Once Diluc's energy is full, he can use a powerful elemental burst. But we're still one short. Never mind. Let's start with the normal attack instead. Diluc's normal attack only needs one pyro die and two other dice of any type. In any case, your normal attack needs fewer pyro dice than your elemental skill. <laughs> now we have three energy plus. We have enough pyro elemental dice left over. It's time to use your powerful elemental burst! Burn! In an actual game of Genius Invocation TCG, you need to use multiple character cards to form a party. <laughs> Next up, it's time for your second character card, Kaya, to take the stage. Oh, it seems like any move by Kaya is going to cost quite a lot of cryo dice. When you deal cryo damage, you'll cause your target to be affected by cryo. Cool it! Good! Now our opponent is affected by cryo! This is a good time to learn about elemental reactions. Different types of elemental damage affect enemies with different elements. When a character is affected by certain elemental combos, an elemental reaction will be triggered. At the moment, your opponent is affected by Cryo, so we should try and use a Pyro skill on them. Looks like we have to switch active characters, though. Oh, that reminds me! Both sides must have one active character, while others are considered standby characters. Normally, we can only use the active character skills. Now, if we want to use the skills of our standby character, we'll have to switch them to the active character. In this case, we'll have to switch to D Luke in order to use his skills. You can spend one elemental die of any kind to switch a standby character to the active character. Let's finish this swiftly. Switching characters is an action just like using a skill. So once it's done, it's your opponent's turn. Most skills can only target the active character. As you can see, your opponent just attacked Diluc. All right then, now that Diluc is our active character, it's time to use his skill. Because the opponent is already affected by Cryo, dealing Pyro damage triggers the Melt Elemental Reaction. When triggered, Melt increases damage dealt by two. This will allow you to deal loads of damage in one go! <laughs> Genius Invocation's Elemental Reaction System is pretty cool, huh? Ha! <laughs> All right. 
right. <laughs> Next up, let's learn how to use card types other than character cards. These cards are all known as action cards. Each time a match starts, you have to draw five action cards to form your starting hand. Uh-oh. Looks like we don't have any elemental dice we can spend to make an attack. Seriously? We still don't have any usable dice even after that reroll? Well, huh, never mind. Even in cases like this, we can still attack. We just need to underestimate action cards. They can grant all kinds of support and buffs to your active character. Take this one, for example. So playing this action card will require two of these. Uh, see the symbol? Yeah, that means you'll need to play elemental dice of the same type. Some other cards will cost you these instead. The cost requirements for these will cross that bridge when we get there, though. For now, just play this action card. So, playing an action card from your hand is a form of fast action. Fast actions do not end your current turn. Simply put, you can continue to act even after playing an action card. Well then, <laughs> you have your blade. Time to test it out. But wait, D Luke's elemental skill costs three pyro dice, and right now, we don't even have one. Well, not a problem. This is where we can use a more advanced mechanic known as elemental tuning. By discarding one card from your hand, you can convert one elemental die into the element of your current active character. And this card isn't useful right now. So we might as well use it for elemental tuning. Sometimes you won't be able to perform any actions you want to because you didn't roll the elemental dice you wanted. Oh well, moving on. Ingenious Invocation TCG. Keeping up a constant flow of combat is much more important than the number of cards you have. In this case, well, <laughs> let's just take all these useless cards and use them for elemental tuning. Just like playing cards from your hand, elemental tuning is a fast action. Come on, hurry up! Use elemental tuning to get yourself three pyro dice. Would you look at that! Finally, we now have enough elemental dice to use Searing Onslaught! Because you have the White Iron Greatsword equipped, Searing Onslaught will deal one extra damage! What? <laughs> Now comes the final part! Oh yeah! In a real match, you can make adjustments to your initial hand. At this time, we can select any number of cards in our hand to shuffle back into the draw pile, and then... Once you have confirmed any adjustments you wish to make to your starting hand, both players have to select their starting active character at the same time. Oh boy, this one's a real doozy. We gotta take it out pronto. Let's see how you do this time. Remember, start by selecting your initial starting character. Let's go. Hey, 
Hey, look at you! You sure are getting the hang of these rolls. Now let me teach you one last trick. Free you can preview your opponent's actions. I mean, that is to say, you can read their intent. Check it out! So here's where you can see all your opponent's intentions for this round. All your opponent's intended actions for the round will be listed here in order. Reference this to come up with effective countermeasures and easily defeat your opponents. Well then, that's the end of the tutorial. You're on your own from here. May victory be yours! Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> There's one more thing I almost forgot. Every time you hit an end phase, you get to draw two cards from your action cards pile. Remember, you have to make use of both your elemental dice and your action cards to win. All right, cool. Those are the basics. Did you get all that? What we just played was an adventure challenge designed specially for new players. Genius Invocation TCG can be played in dual mode, where each player brings three character cards, or in adventure challenge mode, with a fixed deck for each challenge. But the rules are all the same. As long as you understand the basics, then you should be able to take on any of those rowdy booze hounds. 
Although I feel there are still many details to grasp, I think I understand the basic premise of the game now. That was quite the detailed explanation. I didn't know the Cat's Tale's famous mixologist had such an eclectic skill set. What? What? Oh, when did you get here? I stepped in while you were in the middle of your explanation. I hope I didn't dampen the mood. You have slow reactions. Wait, <gasps> are you copying me? Shut up. <laughs> anyway, what are you doing here? The Cat's Tale is a player in Mondstadt's alcohol industry. Naturally, you have some collaboration with my winery. I'm here today to discuss a few items of business with Margaret. Hmm, too bad she just left, but if you head off right now, you might still catch up with her. Never mind, it's nothing urgent. In fact, I think I'm now more interested in this card that you're using to teach them the game. Wait, this card? It's D Luke's character card! Although I have some degree of experience with Genius Invocation TCG, seeing this particular card is a first for me. Uh, a customer left it behind a few days ago, but he wasn't even playing the game while he was here. Oh? And what sort of a customer was he? Uh, he wasn't wearing an eye patch, okay? He had a light complexion and a super serious look on his face. He wasn't much of a talker and looked like he was just drinking his worries away. He never seen him around here before. Hmm. Eye patch, you say? Gah! I was trying to give the opposite description, but I just ended up giving it away. Sorry, guard captain. Don't worry. Somehow, I don't think he'll be giving you any trouble over it. So, what about the Dilu character card? I don't mind. It's just a card with my image on it. I didn't expect Dilu to be familiar with Genius Invocation TCG. The game has been catching on lately. It's hard to go anywhere without hearing it mentioned. Every now and then, I'll sit down and play a game with the customers in Angel's Share. I was hoping we could play a game, but this issue of someone leaving a character card with my image of the cat's tail is... very intriguing. It's getting late, and someone has some explaining to do. We'll have to have that duel another time. Good. Then I'll take my leave. You know where the door is! Uh-oh. Guard Captain. I hope Kaya will be all right. Well, now that we are familiar with the rules, why don't we try playing a game of Genius Invocation TCG? Ooh, two new players having their first ever duel! <laughs> this sounds like fun! But, in order to play an official duel, you need to have three character cards. Remember, a complete deck has to have three character cards and 30 action cards. Got it? Then, let's use my cards. These were mixed in with all the others I had received. And I didn't know what they were for at first. But now that we've learned the rules, I can see that this one must be the Sucrose character card. Now, it looks like we each have the Kaya, Diluc, and Sucrose character cards. So why don't we have our first duel? Alright, let's duel! the adventure challenge you tried previously, duels are true tests of strength between two players. In a duel, your opponent can also use action cards, and they'll also be able to grab new cards during an end phase. At the same time, your opponent must also spend elemental dice to take actions, so you'll be unable to view their intent. <laughs> are you ready? It's time for some exhilarating fights to the bitter end! Let's finish this, swiftly.
Contest 6308. Let's go. This will be interesting. Let's finish this, swiftly.
there can be no <sighs> darn I didn't factor that into the equation Where did I go wrong? I... Uh, okay. One character card defeated. I'm not done. Oh. I wasn't expecting that. when we had the exact same character cards. The rules must be more complicated than I first thought. Every decision is a difficult trade-off in this game. If there was only a way to transplant the arms of the two standby characters onto the active character's body... That's not how the rules work, Sucrose. Don't be a sore loser. That kind of thing is looked down on in TCG circles. Oh, I am sorry. I was beaten fair and square, I know that. I just can't stand losing. But it was a fun match. Paimon didn't know you could get so competitive, Sucrose. I always get a little upset when I lose. It's like that with my research, too. It always gets to me when my experiments don't go as planned. Especially when there's an alchemy genius like Albedo around to compare myself to. Uh, you lost me at alchemy and experiments, but I'm pretty sure it's normal to feel that way. Playing cards is no different. Each game you lose makes you want to win the next one to settle the score, and the desire to win pushes you to improve your strategy and build a better deck. <laughs> Seizing victory through a winning combination of luck, skill, and experience is where all the fun of genius invocation lies. But... What if you keep trying and trying and never win a single game? 
A losing streak, uh, yeah. That'll definitely get you down. But it's way better to keep trying until you win than to just accept you're a plain old loser and give up. Hmm. You make a good point, Diona. Besides, Sucrose, you're already making great progress. It'd take at least eight of our regular booze hounds to match your level. You played well this last match. Thank you. I'm just a little disappointed to lose, that's all. But Genius and Vacation TCG is a really fun game. Good! Having fun is the main thing. If you ever want to play again in the future, feel free to come by the Cat's Tale. Uh, but don't expect me to play with you. I just mean, this place probably has the right atmosphere. I'll definitely be back. All right. I think you should have all the basics down by now. I need to get back to bartending. Sheehan's likely been busy making his tavern more popular with his delicious cocktails. Pui, pui, pui. And we can't have that. Hmm. Huh. Burning Mondstadt's wine industry to the ground keeps me pretty busy, you know. So if you need any more help, go bother Shuyun! I see. So you have now grasped the rules of Genius Invocation TCG. <laughs> That's right! The Travelers, Sucrose, and Paimon are TCG players now! Uh, Paimon picked it up from watching you and Sucrose. Becoming a TCG player is not as simple as that. You cannot call yourselves true TCG players until you have passed the test. Oh, sobering words from Prince there. But I'm afraid he's right. To become official players recognized by the Genius Invocation TCG Society, you have to pass the test. It's just a tabletop card game. I'm not sure how you would plan on achieving something like that. Basically, to become an official and recognized TCG player, you have to best three opponents in a duel. So... You have to win three duels against three different opponents? The duel you just played can count towards this tally. I agree. Although I didn't get to observe the match myself, I did listen along. And from what I could hear, you both performed at a rather high level. Same way you can hear what Prince says? A well-trained ear is a basic skill expected of anyone hoping to become a TCG master. But back to the matter at hand. The Traveler only needs to beat two more opponents to become an official TCG player. Sucrose, you may have lost the last duel, but don't be disheartened. I can assure you that winning three games is well within your ability. <coughs> but first things first, Shuyen. Before that, our TCG newcomers should receive their free gift. Ah oh, yes, my goodness! Completely slipped my mind. I'm lucky to have Prince here to remind me. Everyone who wants to start playing Genius Invocation TCG is entitled to claim a free casket of tomes. Oh, Tameis mentioned it, didn't he? It was from the light novels he's been reading. The thing that the main character found in his attic. Oh, that's right! The soul of an ancient TCG player was trapped inside, right? So the casket of tomes is actually real? <sighs> Well, actually, all card cases in Genius Invocation TCG are called Caskets of Tomes. Not only do they provide a reliable and sturdy container to store your decks, they can also sense when other people in the area are also carrying a Casket of Tomes with them. Oh, Paimon can guess what you're going to say next. The reason they can sense each other is because they have the souls of ancient TCG players inside. That would mean an extraordinarily high number of people in history have been turned into disembodied souls as a consequence of playing card games? No. The real reason that it can sense other caskets is because it holds a nifty little mechanism invented by Sumeru scholars. Darn! What a letdown! Alright, now let's see this casket of tomes already! Well. All caskets of tomes are issued by Margaret, so you will need to see her to claim yours. Probably for the best. 
if Prince and I were responsible for handing them out, knowing how eager we both are to promote the game, we'd probably have dished them all out by now. Okay, so go and see Margaret to claim your casket of tomes, use it to find another player, beat them in a duel, and then come back here. But even for the Traveler, that's only two wins in total. What about the last one? I shall choose the final contestant he must beat in order to become an official TCG player, for it must be one of comparable prowess. Excellent plan, Prince. Happy dueling, both of you. Go, claim your casket of tome. Prince seems to have high hopes. Hello, you three! Has little Diona finished teaching you the rules of genius invocation? Ah, I see you're here for your casket of tomes, aren't you? <laughs> A very useful tool indeed. So this is a casket of tomes. That's right, a purpose-built case for your card deck that can even detect when someone else nearby is carrying one. Gosh, whoever invented this must have seriously disliked being alone. Yeah, well, even the most fun game is pretty lonely if you got no one else to play it with. True, so I'm glad that these customers, um, <coughs> TCG players, are able to congregate at the cat's tail. You're not wrong, but that's secondary. The important thing to me is the opportunity for like-minded people to come together and enjoy their favorite hobby. It creates a nice atmosphere. Anyway, now that you have your caskets of tomes, it's time to find some opponents. All right. In that case, I'll go find some people to play against, too. Let's meet back at the cat's tail in a while. Thanks. I'll do my best. 